This video is about these little plastic inserts that can be placed into wood after you've drilled a suitable hole. I used a flat bit, it was probably not the best tool for the job. There are probably better ones, but that's what I used. And each of these inserts will hold a diffused coloured LED just pressed into the back of it. So you drill the hole down to a specific depth, and then you drill another hole in the back all the way through, and it means you can actually sit these in, they can be glued in, and if desired they can be buffed flush with the surface, and then the whole lot could be lacquered over if you find a lacquer that's compatible with the plastics involved. This is PLA. Now you've seen what it looks like, let's bring back the light and we shall take a look at the construction of these and how you can make them yourself. The light is back and even under f sort of full studio type lighting, these aren't too bad. This one is over drilled and that's just a, I get the feeling that there are better bits than this for doing the job. Also, I think you'd be better with a plunge, either a plunge router or a plunge drill adapted to be able to play, place it over where you wanted the holes in the wooden surface and then plunge down to a very fixed depth. But if you were to drill a load of these and then find that something had slipped and you drilled them a bit deeper than normal, it's no great problem because these are these are 3D printed and the script is down below in the description. You can just copy and paste it into OpenSCAD and you can make custom versions of these in any size. And for that reason, if you had drilled it too deep, you could either just pack it up or glue it at the correct height or just print another one that's uh, slightly deeper because uh, you can change the parameters in them. So the point of this, this was inspired by a picture of a bar that had pinball tables laid into the top of the bar, just the play fields from the machines and wired up with lights. Not a great thing for vintage pinball machines, but if they were beyond recovery, the play fields, that was all right. And uh, I initially thought, the first thought was to actually make sort of uh, concentric circles, sort of a lensing effect like this. But then I decided to go for the star effect like this and uh, have the radio lines. And to be honest, I think this is better because although this, well, I'll show you afterwards, I'll show you the illumination, how well they illuminate evenly. Uh, but I like this one a lot more because once it's laid in, it's really strong. Even this uh, large three inch diameter one, the 75 millimeter diameter is super strong to press in the middle, uh, which means that if you did lay them into a bar, then it's less likely to suffer damage with people pressing down them. Let me think now. This one was done with a uh, coloured PLA. It's not a great thing. Really, I'd recommend the only colour that's used is transparent PLA, either in colours or uh, in uh, clear and I suppose you could put a coloured overlay over the top, but ultimately, uh, clear with a coloured LED is going to produce the best illumination, I think. Anything else worth seeing about these, or do I just go straight into showing you what they look like? I'll go straight into showing you what they look like. One moment, please. I shall start with the biggest cover. I'm going to use a cold white LED just because it's a good neutral colour under the studio settings of the camera. And in this instance, the 3 inch diameter or 75 millimeter diameter in open SCAD, it's uh, oh, look at that, picking up the light from all the other lights. Uh, it's all right, it's better viewed at an angle. It does spread the light and it does spread illumination over the whole surface, but I get the feeling at this size, it's getting a bit too big and it might actually benefit from having other LEDs under different parts of it. However, it's just scaled up from the Typical size that this was designed for. I, the first one I printed off was 20 millimeters diameter. That's probably about um, three quarters of an inch ish. And it's nice. This is the typical size you'd actually find in a pinball machine. However, then it went up to one inch, 25 millimeter, which is what these are. And it looks pretty good. You can see it's got very good illum even illumination. Now, if you used a focus LED, it looks pretty sharp. It looks a wee bit too hot. The diffused LED actually spreads that light out sideways a lot better, so it improves the appearance. Uh, going upwards from that, here is 30 millimeter, which is just over an inch. Uh, 40 millimeter, which is still looking pretty good. And then 50 millimeter, which is probably the upper level for strength and also for uh, uh, even illumination. It still looks pretty good if you had this flash on and off in a sort of bar top. The other lensing effect I've got here is the concentric uh, circles. Quite complex to create, but it creates a genuine lensing effect. It's looking pretty good. It provides good even illumination. The downside of this is that I think that the 
this one is not as strong as the others because while the other ones have those sort of ribs to strengthen it, this one is quite a thin layer. It's basically the front in this one is set at one millimeter thick. Now the parameters you can change are diameter in millimeters, thickness in millimeters, the thickness of the front surface, which uh, if you want to, to be able to actually buff it down flat or have it strong, you could make it more than one millimeter thick, which is the default. And then you can choose the diameter of this stem and the diameter of the LED that goes into it. Not the diameter of the stem, but the diameter of the LED that goes into it and then the length of it from the front surface to the back. And that, in the case of these bigger LEDs, that might actually help with diffusion by actually having the LED mounted much further back from the front of the uh, the lens. And I'll show you these will come out if you print them with a resin printer because uh, it definitely benefits from the fact that it, it fills it in uh, in one direction and it fills it in the other and it creates a, a nice sort of mottled pattern on it just by the way it fills it in. The uh, solid colour PLA works. It glows it lights, but it's not that great. It's not an efficient way of uh, doing it. It's not going to be anywhere near as bright as the others. But that is it. If you look in the description down below, you'll find these files. Normally, I try and say, if you know you don't need a 3D printer for these projects, in the case of this one, you do. But the good news is that it really, it prints very quickly. So, uh, because there's, they're hollow and there's not a lot of plastic in them. So, uh, it produces very good results. Let me show you just before I finish this video. Let me show you it with a coloured LED because coloured LEDs are the way to go for getting coloured lights. It makes a huge difference. It really does uh, make it look so much uh, brighter than trying to use maybe a coloured plastic with uh, over a white LED. The self-coloured LED is going to produce the, produce the brightest result. Uh, it's a good result. I like these. I'm going to have to uh, get some other stuff while well, I've already ordered it for actually re actually placing it on a bench top and then drilling these holes in to the correct depth. But uh, that turned out a lot better than expected. It was a fairly straightforward design. And as I say, the files, the scripts are in the description. You can copy and paste them uh, into OpenSCAD and you can print these off to your heart's desire in any shape and size that you want.